So um, I know I'm not going to get the response rate that, that uh, Tim from Pandora got, but does, do anybody, does anybody here know what Uber is? Nice. All right. If, you, if everybody raised their hands like Pandora, I might have fainted right there. Um, all right. Well, basically, for those of you who don't know, we are an on-demand town car service. Our motto is everyone's private driver. It basically means you take out your smartphone, you push a button, and a car appears within minutes. And you can see the car coming to you on your phone. And when it arrives, uh, basically, you're notified. And you go outside, you get in the car. And when you get to your destination, you get out. It's cashless. You rate the driver, and the driver rates you. Basically, we have an iPhone app that makes all of our customers ballers. Um, and I think the thing that's very interesting about it is that, um, well, uh, what we get from a lot of folks is you know, sort of the head to, hand to forehead moment. Like, that was an app that's so easy and so obvious. Um, I think what people miss about what Uber is is that there's a lot of math and a lot of technology that goes into making it so that when you hit a button, a car appears. Um, so what I thought I'd do is spend a little time on the math that we do at the company uh, so you guys might have a little bit of an appreciation for some of the things that happen behind the scenes. So right here, this is uh, Uber's math department. As you can see, they are the cool kids in school. Uh, what they spend their time on. There's a few things that, that we are focused on at the math department, in the math department at Uber. One is predicting demand. Why do we predict demand? Because if we don't know what the demand is going to be, how do you know how many cars should be on every minute of the day? Right? And then once you've got the demand predictions good, then you have to do what's called supply matching which sounds straightforward, but actually quite complex to make sure that you have the right number of cars and make recommendations to GMs in cities around the world about how many cars should be out there. After you get the supply right, then you have to position that supply, and, and then you go into dynamic pricing. Because at some point, at some point, there's a spike in demand that even if you predict it, there's no way to put 1,000 cars on the road to meet it. And so to clear the market efficiently so that everybody always has the ability to get a ride, uh, sometimes you have to get into some very complex things on the pricing side. And so here's a slide. Uh, here's basically a slide from uh, one of our analytics engines that basically shows our predicted demand uh, right next to actual demand. And so the red is what we predicted in demand, and the blue is what demand was. Now notice this is from September 14th. It's because I had to go back a few weeks to find a really, really good week. <laughs> we call them eyeballs because anytime someone opens up the app, we see that that, that tells us where somebody is interested in using our service. This is a supply recommendation sort of visualization that I'm really not going to spend a lot of time trying to explain. <laughs> uh, once you go through, once you, you know, see these pretty colors, what, what happens at the end of the day is that for every hour of the day, every GM in every city that Uber has basically gets a report that says, well, at any time, here's what we're predicting the number of cars that should be on the road is. Right? So here's the supply recommendation over a given week in a given city. And then, of course, you've got to position that supply. The positioning of supply, again, goes back to demand. Where is the demand in the city? Where should those cars be so that we can bring pickup times down to as low as possible while keeping utilization of those cars very high? Pickup time is dead time. The rider's pissed off and the driver's pissed off. And so if we can keep that very short, that's when the magic happens. And so we do clustering. This is uh, in Chicago, where we uh, launched a few weeks ago. Um, in Chicago, we had, uh, you know, we, we, well, it's obvious where all that's coming from. And we see a huge amount of demand in the center of the city, but it radiates out, which is different from a lot of other cities that we're in. In the pricing side, we actually did a price elasticity test. Uh, we had a, it was very tricky because some consumers were going to get 
10% off or 20% off or 30% off a transportation system that we rolled out in the city. People get very excited about that. You have to be careful about the sort of effects that that creates, but we have to tell them that they got it so we can see their actual behavior. Um, very tricky math, very tricky sort of experiment design to make a price elasticity test work. Uh, Here's something we do. We have some special projects we do, and I, I think I'm running out of time, so I'll just really speed this up. Um, this is uh, basically a view of Manhattan. And we basically, before we go into Manhattan, we say, where do we need to put our cars? Where do we need to focus? How do we segment the markets? We thought Brooklyn was going to be big. It will be. But all the people who had installed our app and put their credit card on file, who were opening it up every couple days to see when we put cars on file or on, on the streets, we're basically in Soho and in Flatiron District and, and Midtown. And we have to do a lot around ETAs. We did a blog post about how we kick Google's ass on ETA prediction. Anybody in a city knows that Google can't do ETA prediction very well. But we now have all this data to provide very good predictions, and they get better the more rides that happen. And the last thing I'll talk about, uh, maybe one of the last, let's check. Yeah, it's the last thing, perfect. Um, is sports. One of the things that you know, is a special project we've been working on recently is that the San Francisco Giants in San Francisco, well, I guess that's obvious, um, when they play, we have a huge pickup in demand. Huge. The interesting part is that when they win, that pickup in demand is, is much larger than when they lose. The tricky part is that that pickup in demand when the Giants win happens three hours before the game starts. Just sit with that for a second. <laughs> All right. So Uber Vegas takes on a whole new meaning. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks, thanks for having me. Um, I want to let you know we, um, we just recently launched in Chicago. And uh, it was about a month ago, uh, a few weeks ago. We have a ton of cars out there. And I think at the end of this, a uh, few folks from our team are going to be handing out cards so that you guys can get, you know, I like to say, we'll make it rain on your account. So um, <laughs> thank you very much.